The Cyclocross World Championships take place in Hogeheide in the Netherlands this year. Despite certain riders' dominance of much of the cross season, the worlds are always an open book. Here are GCN's 10 riders to watch. Sven Nace. It goes without saying that Sven Nace is the rider to watch at every race he starts. Nace has looked to be on a roll in recent weeks, but the World Championships haven't always been a happy hunting ground for him. His only wins at elite level came in St. Wendell in 2005 and last year in Louisville. With his previous two titles coming in sprint or close finishes, we're not expecting him to ride away with this one either. With this in mind, Nice skipped the final round of the World Cup at Nome last weekend in order to focus on peaking for the Worlds. Tom Musen. Tom Musen has been on the edge of becoming one of the big name cross riders for a number of years now. He tends to clock one or two big wins a year. This season he won the classic Koppenberg Cross, but despite his ability to win on his day, he's yet to take a medal at elite world championship level. After a mid-season lull, Mjosen is back in flying form, unluckily losing out due to a mechanical at Leven and winning the final round of the World Cup at Nome. Katie Compton Katie Compton has been dominant at World Cup level this year and secured the overall title with one round remaining. Compton's best result at a World Championships is second. Mariana Voss has proved to be her nemesis on the day, but with the full-time support of Trek and after beating Voss on a number of occasions this season, could this be Compton's year? Mariana Voss Mariana Voss can't have started a race as anything less than the favourite for years. Voss has won six cross world titles and has held the rainbow jersey since 2009 when the race also took place in Hogeheide. Voss rarely rides a full cross season, instead preferring to focus on national and world championships. The battle between Voss and a strong Katie Compton should be fascinating. Mathieu van der Poel Mathieu van der Poel will be looking to extend his undefeated streak at the Cross Worlds. Van der Poel won the rainbow jersey in both his years in the junior category and has been a force to be reckoned with at under-23 and elite level, winning the under-23 World Cup and taking Niels Albert to a sprint finish in the elite race at Antwerp. His first season as an under-23 hasn't been without challenge, but he's never finished lower than fourth place so we expect him to be on the podium and in the race for the top step. Wout van Aert Wout van Aert has been one of the few under-23 riders who have challenged Mathieu van der Poel this year. A year older than van der Poel, van Aert has gone on better than van der Poel by winning an elite race this year, something that the younger rider has been close to doing but not accomplished. Whenever conditions have become muddy, van Aert has looked to have had the edge on van der Poel, as seen in the final round in the World Cup at Nome. This could be the race to watch at the Worlds this year. Sanacant. For all their depth in the men's races, Belgium are weak on numbers when it comes to women's racing, but despite being down on numbers, the Belgians will still feel a strong cross team, and that will be headed by Sanacant. Kant has had two podiums in the World Cups this year and is current Belgian champion. She is also the only Belgian female to medal at Cross World Championships. For a nation that is used to sweeping podiums at Cross World Championships, the solitary bronze in the women's event must hurt, but any slip-ups from Compton or Voss and Kant could be the woman to end the Belgian gold medal drought. Francis Moray Along with Lars van der Haar, Francis Moray is one of the two non-Belgian riders named as a threat by Belgian national coach Rudy de Bee. Moray was looking good during the Worlds in Louisville last year and pushed the pace early in the race before fading away. His World Cup win in Namur over Christmas showed that he's in strong form this season and he could be the one rider to disrupt any plans that the Belgians might have to sweep the elite men's podium. Philippe Valsaben Valsaben already has World Championship pedigree, winning the under-23 cross title in 2009. Second overall at the World Cup, he's been a nearly man all year and if he can turn his consistency into on the day form, he will be a rider to watch. Lars van der Haar Lars van der Haar goes into the elite race at Hogeheide as the home favourite. The Dutch haven't won an elite men's world title since Lars Boom in Italy in 2008. After his World Cup overall victory, van der Haar will be a heavily marked man. No other rider will want to take the Dutchman onto the last lap as he's rarely beaten in a sprint. If the race is fast, or if the others aren't fast enough to shed him before the final road section, the money will be on van der Haar. Who were you cheering for in Hogeheide this year? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to GCN on YouTube for results and analysis from the races. The popular image of cyclocross is one of a rider being forced to carry his bike up a muddy bank in the middle of winter. This gets most things right. Cross is predominantly a winter sport and cross courses